Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get a free bottle of iced tea. What's going on YouTube? It's Noxo and we're back. Well, kind of with our reaction series, you guys seem to be enjoying these little talks. We've done a couple live streams now and we have mentioned doing sort of a look into some of the history of hip hop, some of the things going on. So I thought this would be a good time to do a little bit of that while talking about a current events and relevant issue. So, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Snoop Dogg took some shots at Eminem, all right? It was his tone, it was the way that he said things. We saw the IG Live, we did a breakdown of it on this channel. Eminem responded with Zeus. There's been some back and forth since then, but Dr. Dre unfortunately was hospitalized. Glad that he's doing better. Seems like he's on the road to recovery. So first and foremost, shout out to Dre. Hope for the best with him, man. Nothing more important than your health. But anyways, it feels like this Dre situation, Dre was kind of caught in the middle between M and Snoop, right? And I wonder if that situation led to stress for him and was one of the consequences of him actually being hospitalized. That I don't know. I don't know the inside stories on that. But I like to think that Em and Snoop took it as an opportunity to actually come together to realize that it is more internal, that they are on the same team. And it seems like, it seems like the beef has been squashed. But don't take my words for it. Let's, let's check out what Snoop just said in a recent interview. But before we go any further, guys, I want to give a quick mention and reminder to you that every Saturday from now on, we are doing a live stream on this channel, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And this Saturday, it is the highly requested Rap God Breakdown. That's right, we're gonna see if I can survive Eminem's Rap God and we're gonna do it live on this very channel, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, anyways, Eminem, Snoop Dogg. See what you got to say, Snoop. Step up to the plate. Shirley has a question for Snoop. Shirley, what's your question? Hi, Snoop. This is so crazy. We love you so much. We've been with you since DPG. It's um, a long time. What's your response on Eminem dissing you on that new track, uh, Zeus? Do you think it's because he wasn't included in your list of best rappers the game has ever seen? Because I know you guys were friends. Uh, we're still friends. I think that's that's family business, and I don't want to, you know, make it more than what it is. I mean, he said what he said. I respect that, and we're just going to keep it right there. It's family business. Ah, right there. That's it. We're going to keep it right there. It's family business. Now, also, there was a fan who posted a picture of Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, asking what happened. And then Snoop responded, as is hit the press in the media, saying nothing. We're good. Now, look, it's very interesting the way that he put that. You know, this is, this is family business, right? Like, this is something in-house. Family does fight. But at the end of the day, even though family fights, they love each other. So I do like that he put it as, this is family business. And again, as we talked about, these are two hip-hop icons, man. These are two people who have had such a great impact on the history of hip-hop, on hip-hop culture, and the music as it is today. And when we looked at Crooked Eye's words, he was worried about it falling into a race war. He was worried about the repercussions of all of that. But the thing is, the thing is, even though it looks like the beef is now squashed, I want to ask the question, is it really over? Now, you guys know that I check my DMs in my comments. And I got a few DMs with a link to an early interview. We're talking years ago of Snoop Dogg talking about Eminem at the time. And I thought it would be interesting to look at that right now and talk about it. Actually, I didn't, when I first heard it, I didn't think nothing about Stan. I don't listen to Eminem records. No disrespect to him. But I don't listen to Eminem records. I'm a guy. It uses the same sample. Listen to how he starts that, man. I mean, that is put in a passive-aggressive way. There's a, there's a tone to how you say things. Now, listen, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. We said that on here. But there are consequences to when you express your opinions, especially when you're at a high level of influencer that Snoop Dogg is. And what pissed off Eminem and what he even said in his interview was the tone that Snoop took. And the way that he puts things. And the way that this is right here, the tone immediately is just, man, there's just, there's something off with it, isn't there? I listen to Eminem's music. I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster. Just implying right there that what? Gangsters, people from the hood don't listen to Eminem. They don't bump M. Listen, Snoop, I'm from PG, my friend. All right? I know that I'm a uh, skinny white boy. But I come from a hip-hop, very strong, very proud black community. And one thing I can tell you is that's that's not true, man. That's that's not true. People from all classes, all races, 
all come ups listen to Eminem's music. Now there might be certain songs that they don't fuck with, that they don't bump, because they don't necessarily relate to it, but everybody has listened to Eminem's music. And they appreciate his pen game and what he does. You don't have to disqualify something by just saying, you know, I'm gangster. What, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> congratulations. We knew that already, Snoop. But what is, how does that apply to this situation? I don't listen to Eminem right. I'm a gangster. It, it, it uses the same sample for uh, Eminem's beat. I can't tell. They're talking about a fan, somebody that there's a groupie on Eminem dick that, that, that's writing letters and all kind of shit. Dreaming of being him, my shit is around here, you know, gangster shit. I was just saying that the beat used the same time. Well, that's Dr. Dre, he's a producer. Why wouldn't he use his, his shit? That's his shit. You know what I'm saying? Roger Trauma used the same sound on every beat he ever made. So yeah. Very- yeah, I mean, especially in the 90s, a lot of hip-hop producers have similar sounds. I mean, sounds have changed. Like, producers have just totally different sounds now and signatures like what a lot of producers do nowadays is they'll use like a tag you know they'll have like a sample of their voice at the beginning to let you know that their fingerprints are on the track but what snoop is saying here is like there's a certain sound and what he's being asked is about the song stan because there's a bit of sampling from stan so he's asking about dre sounds and what snoop is saying is that no that's just that's just what dre does that's a part of his trademark and his signature sound and he applies that core sound and those core principles to whatever track that he's working on all right, I get that. I get that. You know what I'm saying? Roger Trauma used the same sound on every beat he ever made. It's fair enough. Yeah. Barry White used the same sound on every beat he ever made. Yeah, now you got me wrong. I wasn't criticizing it, homie. No, I'm just, I'm just giving you so you'll know, so the viewers can know. A producer has a sound that's identified with him. So that's an identification that's saying that Dr. Dre really put his hands on that track. I didn't hear Stan on that song when I heard it. That song didn't remind me of Stan. It made me want to start talking shit about round here. It ain't safe to leave the house. Don't fuck around round here. Niggas will put you in it. Don't fuck around round here. That's what I was on. I wasn't on no stand. Write me a letter. I want to come see you. You're my favorite fan. All I wasn't on that bullshit. <laughs> I mean, what is that? He even, like, does... I. Like a corny white boy voice. That's that's the only way that I can put it. Stan, wrote you a letter. Eh, man, man. Like very nasally. And I get that he's trying to mimic what M is doing. But listen to the tone. Listen to the way that he's putting this stuff, man. He's so adamant. He does not want his song being related to Stan at all. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Stan is one of the most iconic songs from Eminem. It's one of the most iconic rap songs that just crosses borders and that everyone knows globally, man. It's crazy the amount of people who have listened to and been affected by Stan. I would take it personally as a compliment if I'm getting some of my shit compared to Stan. But listen to the way Snoop Dogg is doing this, man. He really wants to make it crystal clear that his music does not relate to Eminem's in any way. And then it's how he's flipping it. It's a connotation that he's taking. Like, I'm a gangster. I was talking about from around here when I heard that beat. This is how I wrote it. I wasn't on this Stan shit. But I mean, what it, what is Stan on? Like, I, I don't understand that. Eminem is talking about fans. And Eminem is very cleverly putting a relationship with a fan who becomes obsessive with him, who then takes it to another level, and he ties the story in at the very end with when he saw the news and realized that this is the dude that was writing to him the whole time, and he never responded to those letters until it was too late. I mean, that's storytelling 101, the storytelling at its finest. But every music artist should be able to relate to that, especially when you're at a high level like Snoop. I'm sure that Snoop has had plenty of obsessive fans. That's why Snoop Dogg has to have security. That's why Snoop Dogg has to look out for himself, because that does actually happen. There are crazy fans out there. I mean, does does every song that you make have to be gangster in order for you to bump it? Are there not other types of songs, relationships, and issues and situations that you can bump? I mean, does Snoop Dogg ride around like 24 hours a day listening to nothing but street, hardcore, gangster music? I don't understand that. Like the human range of emotion and and spectrum. Like sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we need songs to help us when we're sad. Sometimes we're in love and we want songs to express that love. You know, sometimes we're going through struggle and we have this come up story and we need to be motivated and inspired. That's the beauty of music. There's, There's different music and sounds depending on your situation. 
And even throughout the day, a person's emotions and where they are and what phase they are in their day and their emotional level, that changes too. So I, I don't understand, man. I mean, if, if you just sit there just trying to be hard 24 hours a day. But again, how does that even just dismiss Stan? I, again, I'm not, I'm not seeing the logical connection here because the Stan story is something that even Snoop Dogg can relate to at the level that he's at. You get what I'm saying here? You, you get the irony of this? He, he really wants to just disqualify being associated with Eminem in any way. And this is where I kind of want to talk a little bit about the history of Snoop. Now, one of the things we did was we looked at King Crooked on this channel. And I have a lot of respect for one of the OGs, King Crooked. He was at Death Row Records at the time of Pac, at the time of Snoop, and all these things. And I really respect his words because he is a true sort of gatekeeper to hip-hop in a lot of ways like Snoop is. But at the time of Pac, man, when Pac got brought over to Death Row by Suge Knight, there was a lot of jealousy. And it's been well documented. And there's been interviews. And maybe I will cover some of these interviews. But basically, man, Snoop, Snoop stirred the pot. And right before, actually, Pac got shot, there was this plane ride back when they were on the East Coast. And Pac fell out with Snoop big time. Pac didn't want to speak to Snoop. I mean, Suge didn't even let Snoop's security onto the plane. They got off the plane. They went their own ways. I mean, there's, there, there is well-documented history of this. And the thing was, at the time, right, I understand that Snoop Dogg, he was, he was kind of the big dog at the time on death row. And he was the one making all the noise. But see, Pac was also well-established. And when Pac got brought over to death row, all Pac did was just increase everyone's pockets there at death row, including Snoop. He just brought more deals over. He brought more fame and recognition at death row. It's like playing a sport, right? And you're on a team. And all of a sudden, you know, you're like the star running back. And then your team signs Tom Brady. And it's like... What, what do you do in that situation? Do you get jealous because all of a sudden you have another great celebrity? Or do you go, all right, we're going to now go win a Super Bowl because we got Tom Brady. You know what I mean? Like it's that team mentality. But Snoop didn't look at it from a team mentality. He definitely fell out with Pac. There's definitely been documented people from inside the industry, inside of death row at that time, who have said, look, man, Snoop, Snoop wasn't happy with Pac coming over. And see, I think that just kind of shows the mentality of Snoop. And this is how I'm going to take this and apply it to Eminem. Because if you look at a pattern of someone's history, no, I don't know Snoop personally. But sometimes you can look at how they act in certain situations and how they go throughout history. How do they handle things? How do they treat other people within their own camp? And it kind of sheds a little bit of light into sort of their character and maybe what they're thinking. And in this situation, I feel like Snoop is jealous of them. And it's a similar situation to what happened with Pac. And isn't funny when we talked about Crook, because Crook fell out with Snoop at the time. All the death row fell out with Snoop, but Crook even dropped Snoop Dogg disses. So, you know what? I'm going to put those links below. I'm going to put the links below to uh, Crooked Eyes disses the snooze, because, man, there's some, there's some dope disses that have kind of been forgotten in the catalogs in the library there. But, but Crooked, man, Crooked called Snoop a snitch. And there's definitely been allegations of Snoop being a snitch and... Well, there's, there's been some hypotheticals revolved around him and Pac and the whole Pac situation. I don't want to dive too deep into that side of things, but there have been times when Snoop's character has been called into question, that's for sure. But anyways, anyways, what I'm saying is that you've got Pac, big celebrity, comes in. All of a sudden, the limelight is now off of Snoop, and it's on Pac. What happens? They fall out. Eminem, similar situation. Similar situation now. Snoop Dogg is the big dog. Eminem comes over. Now all of a sudden Eminem starts getting all of the attention. Eminem becomes Dre's favorite in a sense, right? We know that Dre's still close with Snoop. We know that Dre's still close with M. But at that time, think about it. Think about the impact that M had. It's a lot of like the Tupac effect, right? So M comes over and all of a sudden Snoop Dogg kind of gets put to the side because Eminem gets all the limelight. He starts getting all the credit. He gets all the media attention and i really think that if you look at an interview like this because this is this is in the past remember i know this snoop dogg situation has just happened but let's look to the past now let's look at the tone that he's using in an interview about eminem back then judging by this interview the tone that he takes the way he wants to discredit eminem his argument which is the same as he used on that breakfast club interview about you know street shit gangster shit People don't listen to M. He's on this side of the fence. M's on that side. You know, he can live without M's music. 
A lot of those things are not ideas that he has just recently had. He is showing here that there is a pattern of this, that there is this pattern of this way of thinking with him. And yeah, maybe some of this stuff has come out recently, but it seems to me like he's always been this way. And it seems to me like this is the Tupac effect all over again. I really do sense and think that there's a, just a little bit of jealousy with Snoop and Eminem. And is that jealousy ended? Is it truly actually squash? You know, I know Denon has come out and talked about it. Shout out to Denon Porter. I know others have now talked about it. And it seems like, yeah, things are settled for now. But what's to stop Snoop from having another interview in like a year from now, two years from now, and just saying a little something else about him? Because to me, if you've got an issue with someone, which there definitely is here, there's, there's some deep-rooted stuff with Snoop that it doesn't seem like he's dealt with in accepting M into the culture and accepting M kind of into his world. It's almost like they're friends, but they're like friendly, friendly enemies, frenemies. Can I use that? I'm going to use that today. We're going to use frenemies today. That's, that's just what it feels like to me. Like, like Snoop sees Eminem kind of as like this rival. And I don't know. I don't know if Snoop in, in the back of his mind, if he has Eminem cemented in a true place in hip hop, because if he doesn't, it definitely explains why he kind of wants to push him out, why he doesn't want to be associated with his music and associated with the moves that he makes and what he does. And I think personally that this beef is not truly over. Sure, it will be squashed for now. For all the press, it looks good. Everyone will be talking about, oh, it's over, it's over, it's over. Some of you guys will be in my comment section saying, well, Snoop said this and Snoop said that, so it's got to be over. But what I'm trying to point out here is that judging by the way that Snoop has handled issues and situations in the past, I think that this is far from over. And I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out later on and we just have another example where Snoop just kind of pops off at the mouth because he speaks very freely. He speaks what come to his mind. And there's things that are deep down in his subconscious right now I think that he hasn't fully dealt with in relation to Eminem. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that the beef is truly over? I don't know. Let me know. Comment down below. So hope you guys enjoy this talk, guys. I just thought it was a good time to give a little bit more into sort of some of the history of hip hop, a little bit of what's going on in the past, talk about Snoop Dogg in the present. Also, if you guys like these reactions, you like these talks, listen, we're doing another live stream this Saturday. And I'm excited because we're going to do Eminem's Rap God on Saturday. We're going to do a live breakdown of Rap God on this channel. We're going to see if my brain can take it, if my mind will explode at the end of it all. So stay tuned for that. Those links will be included. But thank you guys for supporting. This is your reminder to stay safe, to stay positive. If you need anything at all, reach out to me. Reach out to this community. I love you. Thank you for the support. It's Knoxville, and I'll catch you in the next vid. I'm out.